Hello MMA community, Fighting Guru fans, we're back for another episode to talk about one of the fights that I'm going to give you a good prediction, a good value pick on for the Jiri and Piero fight coming up UFC 295 this Saturday. Um, it's a very good value pick, this uh, slight favorite should be a much bigger favorite if you ask me. Uh, the style matchup opponent suits him very well. And he's finally getting accustomed to the whole system of how it works with, uh, you know, being a, a new member of the roster of the UFC, a new, a new fighter. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're just starting up, you, you still haven't got everything down packed. You know, the time, the traveling, the weight cuts. So you don't come in as good as you were when you were fighting locally in your backyard and uh, so it's a lot to get used to, and now that he's finally got a little bit of uh, uh, experience inside the UFC, it's gonna, we're gonna, we should see one of the better versions of him th th than we have in the past. And he's still undefeated in the UFC, so he's, he's held a good account of himself, and he's fought some pretty good uh, opponents for someone uh, coming in on the new. Uh, and, you know, it's, the reason why I say this is going to be a good style of matchup, and by the way, uh, sorry for not posting videos uh, in quite some time. I'm going to be doing this now uh, full time again. I had some obligations outside of this uh, business that I had to take care of and they're finally uh, over with now and I'm capable of uh, putting in some more time on the videos and uh, dedicating uh, to the fans and, and betting community out there some more, some more time and effort in helping you guys make some money. I do have a Patreon. I developed my own uh, bulletproof system that allows you as long as you're as long as I am uh, north of 60 70 percent accurate uh, on my predictions each week we're always going to be in the profits it's never usually a matter of if we're going to profit but how much we're going to profit because I bet on all the fights pra practically all the fights you know here and now and then I may stay away from one or two of the fights on the card but by being able to use all the fights my bulletproof system allows me to not have to put all my eggs in one basket and I'll give you some examples on the screen of how we do our parlays uh, but it's a perfect system in, in case anything goes wrong as long as we're we're not getting half the fights wrong you're gonna see some type of profits on a good day where we're only getting one wrong or maybe no wrong like we've had many times you're gonna see three to eight times your money back in profits on these parlays all right, get started. Uh, I'm going to talk to you on this video. I'll be posting probably two or three a week, and then you can get the full picks, the parlays, betting instructions inside the Patreon, uh, where the link will be actually on this video. You, you can find it, or one of my accounts, social media accounts. All right, today we're talking about the Vlachal, Vlachal, sorry if you guys know anything about me, I'm not good with names. Uh, Borishlov fight versus Sad Sadikov, Nazim. Uh, Nazim, uh, he's coming in 9-1. and one. He's, he's got uh, only one loss on his record, but he's on a pretty good win streak. It's been some time since, since he's lost. He fought, fought against, his only loss was against pretty good competition, I, I would say. It wasn't a can uh, from the regional scenes. V um, Vlashilov, he's got a 7-3 and three record. Uh, he's been in the UFC a little bit longer. About same size, same reach, same height, almost identical. So that shouldn't play any factors. The reason why I'm siding with the Nazim side, who's only a minus 140 favorite right now, is studying their fight tapes, I've noticed. Um, it's perfect style matchup for him. And overall, um, we should be able to see, even though, you know, Vlash Borshev is primarily a striker. He doesn't have anything else in his arsenal. He's not very well-rounded. We've even seen... Um, his takedown defense has got to be some of the worst we've ever, ever seen in the UFC. The guy's got probably the worst takedown defense I've ever seen. And it's not because maybe he doesn't know how to wrestle or whatever. Because he's got a pretty good get-up game. His grappling is not the worst. But the reason why you'll, many people probably wouldn't have caught this, but again, I got experience. I spent many years in the gym and you know, boxing, wrestling, all the different types of facets of, of combat sports. So I was able to recognize what his mistakes are are that caused them to have so much trouble even against guys who are not wrestlers that we hardly ever see use grappling have had just such an easy time getting him to the ground 
Like, for example, Mike Davis. Mike Davis, he's usually a guy we see rely on his stand-up to win fights. He, or DeCasey is a different story. You know, we've we seen him transition into mostly wrestling. But both of those guys uh, made light work of him on the ground because and had no issues getting him to the ground. Because the way Mike, I mean, the way Vlashiv, Jesus Christ, uh, Vlashilov uh, uses his striking, which is what he depends on, is not very uh, technically sound. I mean, he, um, what he does is he's kind of like one of the, he's either one way or the other. He's either throwing really little tip-tap shots that don't affect his opponents much, and it's hard to even count them as significant strikes because there's such light strikes. And mind you, he's not a very big guy. He's not very muscular. He, he, he's to, to give you a good hit, he's got to put a, he's got to put a very good technique, some speed and power behind it, or he's not going to be able to phase his opponents. And that's why he doesn't got many knockouts, um, especially not at this level. It, you, you won't be seeing this guy knocking too many people out. Um, so the reason why he's easily taken down is he doesn't have the right technique. His footwork is terrible. And when he's trying, he either wants to throw big power punches, which affects his cardio because the way he's throwing it, not only his feet work isn't properly being used, which you'll notice he's a lot of the times he's lunging at the opponent. Sometimes I've even seen both feet in the air while he's throwing a strike. And naturally, if you're not a trained boxer, I would say, or somebody who's trained in using their hands in the fight, footwork, I know when I was boxing, the first like year of me training full time, everything was footwork. I had to repeat the same movements, the same regiments over and over. Even though I had it memorized, I knew what I was supposed to do. It's not about knowing what to do. It's about making it a natural movement so that when you're in you know, a, a crazy battle and you're not using your head, you're using your natural re reflexes and, and it becomes your natural movement. And when you have to rely on uh, just natural movements of like uh, a regular street fighter, a street fighter, when he's throwing his hardest punch, he, his whole body's going into it. He's not using the proper parts of his body to make the punch accurate and allow him to stay balanced. So when you're throwing punches like he is, there's no way you're not going to be able to get taken down to the ground if you're at your opponent's um, choosing. At any time, he can just grab you and you're in, you're in it's impossible for the guy to keep his balance. So for that reason, we know if Sadikov does get into any trouble on the feet, it's going to be something uh, you know as easy as one, two, three to get him back uh, out of the element that he's used to and um, let him let him recoup at least from strikes if it got to that point. But the other thing is, even on the feet, I don't see Sadikov having too many problems with this guy because here's the problem. Uh, his guard, it's very easy to split his guard. Uh, he doesn't keep his hands really tight because he's always looking to throw. That's a good, you know, it's kind of like a, a good thing and a bad thing for him because he throws a lot of strikes, which doesn't keep his hands in a um, in, in a position where he can actually uh, defend from strikes. And because 90% of his strikes are not power punches, because the way he throws power punches, if he was only throwing power punches, he'd be on his back or he'd be gassed out in one round. Again, he doesn't use the right technique. He's not very sound on the, uh, but he throws a lot of volume. And, but when he's throwing, and because they're not very big power punches, his opponents don't even really have to defend very well against them. And if they're dishing out offense, if you're trying to trade hits, you're not trading with like a Derek Lewis or a Francis Ngannou where you're going to get in trouble and get into some battle that, you know, a, a war that could get you in trouble. If you're trading shots with Borshev, you're, you're, you're going to get the better of the exchanges on the judges' cards and in damage. Because for every time he's hitting you, you're going to throw a clean, hard hit. It's going to affect him more. So I'm almost confident, 100% sure that it's going to turn out to be a knockout. Because, you know, uh, they're both, if you look at their statistics, they both throw about the same significant strikes per minute. They both absorb about the same. They, they both got the same reach. So it's not like one guy's only, you know, he, he's very slow. And he does. so the speed, the power, I'm going to give, you know, maybe not so much the speed, the power, I'm giving it to Sadikov. And when you're throwing the same amount of punches as your opponent, but you're the more powerful guy and you're more well-rounded, there's no reason why he's only he should only be a minus 140 favorite. So from my study tapes, from my fight tape studies and uh, 
everything else, the the holes that I found um, in, in one of these guys, there's no ch there's no chance that we're going to see Sadikov get his first loss in the UFC against this opponent. I think this is a stepping stone. They, they want to make this guy look good because, you know, he had a sh last minute opponent, I think in his debut fight, it was, it, it was some issues and so they're trying to give the, give this guy the stage to make himself look really good, and I think this is the moment where he's going to capitalize on that. Fi fi you know, fi finally he's got an opponent that, opponent that he's been able to prepare for. He's expecting it's not going to be a last minute replacement, and this is what they want for this guy. Uh, you know, he's got a pretty good record, and uh, he, he should be able to pull this one off with ease. All right, guys, you guys got one pick. I'll be posting another video uh, in the next day or two, and uh, you'll get a couple free picks from me. Par good parlay picks. Uh, each week or before each event, I'm also doing Bellator and PFL. If you're in my Patreon, you get the full picks and parlays. Uh, some prop bets to go with it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen my social media, but my prop bet uh, picks are insane accuracy. I've even gone on an event where I had 13 out of 13 prop bets cash in. I used to be called the prop bet master for a reason. All right, uh, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you already haven't. Leave some comments with some uh ideas or some fights that you may want me to talk about and i'll get back to you guys on it all right good luck